Alrighty, welcome back to the Tough Questions, everybody. We are continuing our Portal 2 playthrough, as we didn't really get very far in the last one. <laughs> well, we kind of did. Did we? Did we almost beat it? No, yes. In 12 minutes? <laughs> in <laughs> <laughs> I would be so disappointed. Oh. One of my favorite things to do in this game is open two portals that allow the box to just keep falling. Right. Oh. That's some crazy physics, man. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, face. I had to catch it. Oh man. Oh, uh, where is where is the button? The button. The, the button. The button. Anyway, today's tough question. Oh geez. It's kind of a silly one. Oh, I like. Why? This. <laughs> why is it a bit socially awkward to play with toys as an adult, but it's perfectly fine to watch nine and a half hours of Netflix in one sitting? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like come on. Everyone does that second one. It's true. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it's way more than like eight or nine oh, hours. Yeah, sometimes like, you just like wake up, not wake up, but you go outside four days later and you're like, oh my God, what, I don't have a job anymore. What, what Breaking happened? Bad is so awesome. <laughs> oh man, all of these things were so cool. <laughs> yeah. Like I just wanted to keep watching it over. But the reason I'm asking is because Legos, bro. Come on. No, for real. I'm like, I should just have a kid so it's not creepy when I go into the Lego store. You need to get out of my head because I was honestly thinking that exact same thing. Legos? Well. Legos are awesome. But I haven't played with them in forever. You haven't? Not in a while. Probably the last time I actually played with Legos, I was at my parents' house and my little brother's kid was over there. He was probably about five or six at the time. And we got down and it was a lot of fun. But if I spent... I mean, I guess some people actually do buy them, like, as more com complex ones. Yeah, like the Millennium Falcon, what? whatever. Yeah, that's like, oh, my God. Giant that fortresses like, and things like that. I think that like thing's that. like $300, too. Seriously, there's some, like, Legos were expensive when I was a kid. I can only imagine that they're buku bucks these days. Right. One of my one of my professors, actually, like, he, he told his son, like, once he did a certain task, you know, he was reinforcing behavior. He was like, we can go to Toys R Us, and you can pick out whatever Lego you want. And he said he walked up with the Millennium Falcon, and he was like, "Oh, whatever, that's cool." Like it that. got to the yeah, it got to the register. It was like two hundred dollars. He's like, "What? It's Legos, though." He was so confused. That oh. sounds like an only child. Was he an only child? Because uh, guess what? I didn't go to a single Toys R Us until I was like old enough to go myself. <laughs> really? Yeah, I had four brothers, man. Oh yeah, that parents was buy, your parents buy toys at. Uh, the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the thing that was the thing oh the button is like a toy for us actually i suppose we only actually got toys when it was our birthday or if it was christmas if it was <laughs> really hell yeah oh I, I forget how many brothers you have and i'm an only child so and my parents were like big fans of getting like uh educational toys which were like half the time they were pretty cool like erector sets but i mean other times it was like oh great a, oh. bu a book about science <laughs> <laughs> it's got, you know, whatever activities in it. And you're like, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this stupid ass coloring book that I have to deal with. Did you ever get those, like, weird. Uh, we're totally up topic. Did you ever get those. Never like, got on topic. So I know. I guess we're not. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Did you, did you ever get those, like, uh, how do I explain it? They were metal rings. They, they were puzzles, essentially, but they came in, like, a pack of maybe five or ten. I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> it's, it's it's this weird puzzle toy, and I used to get them all the time. Like it drove me crazy. I was like, what the what the hell is this? Like, what am I supposed to be doing with this? Man, I am the master of this. I'm just flying through. Anywho, what are we talking about today? Is the question that we always ask. <laughs> <laughs> truth truth you're we on the tough to question a lot of questions on this show we call the tough questions <laughs> that's some Although grade some a them aren't, some of them aren't really very tough grade a <laughs> like why can't we play with legos anymore why can't we <laughs> anyway we've already we're past it we're past it all right creativity creativity I this love is it. it's it's a big one and i really enjoy this subject i mean we we could talk about it we could realistically talk about it for a long time but i'm gonna try and stuff as much as i can into this that's cool because we already wasted like four minutes talking about legos <laughs> that's not a bad thing i'm okay <laughs> with that <laughs> well you can create with legos yeah anyway oh, yeah. creativity what about it oh, I gotta what exactly there. are we talking about what are we talking about so four. numerous numerous uh theorists and psychology peoples and things psychology things psychology things and stuff um what i don't hold on i don't know what we're doing 
I'll that figure it out. That sounds about right. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Uh, so Maslow uh, thought that creativity was important because it just provided meaning and purpose in your life. And it also helped with the self-actualization. Yeah. And then let's see here. Freud thought that we create. So that way we... Uh, Oh, gosh, what what is the word that I'm looking for? What, to cope with difficult situations. Wait. So coping. Coping. <laughs> but in a way, yeah. Because whenever we deal with put what plug me into the wall over where? Where? Into the wall. Where what wall? Plug him in. Oh, that okay. <laughs> I didn't I didn't see the prod. Anywho, so he thought that we were creative or we build creativity because of difficult situations and a couple other things. Uh, then we have Adler, who Alfred Adler. These are all psychology theorists. All of them are dead. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> yeah, uh, he thought that we created to compensate for our inferiorities because by uh, creating, then that is not necessarily overcompensating, but it makes up for an inferiority. So you know, as as Adler would say, I always try and preface that that this is as the theorists were saying. So if you were not very uh you didn't think that you were very attractive so to speak right so if you yeah sure you have low self-esteem in a way right uh you might try and become like a really good hobbyist such as a painter photographer so on and so forth because you're making up for those inferiorities sure. and then finally frankel we talked about frankel we talked about crabbing and a couple other things we did uh he believes that by giving to the world, it provides meaning and purpose to who you are. And so I thought creativity would be a neat thing to talk about because you and I are both big on creativity and creating and trying to not necessarily make like niches, but create novelty, the things that, that are original and, you know, ours so that that way we can kind of hold on to those. But I don't want to sit here. I, I need, I'm going to preface it one more time that we're not saying just go out and create because that's that's some bullshit. That's some life coach shit. Like, well, l- l- let's let me clarify that we go. are we are saying you should go out and create, but we're not <laughs> ending it right there. Right. Because the fact of the matter is, if I just tell you, and like honestly, I'm a big proponent of telling people if they're kind of looking for a purpose or they're feeling a little depressed because they don't know what they want to do. I mean, you talk to a lot of people who uh, become lost because they just don't know what they want to do with their life. Right. It's like just in at least in the meantime, start finding something you like to create, and you know, don't just end it there because you can't just tell somebody go 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 create something because like what does that even mean? Right. Like, what draw a picture? I don't like to draw. I don't like to draw. Or so what we're play suggesting a musical is instrument. I yeah, don't like take I, that idea and kind of analyze it. Be like, well, you know, sit down, and think about it. maybe just write down a whole list of what things that can be created: paintings, music, uh, writing, photography. You I, know. You and can, it doesn't even have to be on that. On. Like, it could yeah, be carpentry, fashion, clothing, yeah, yeah. chairs, makeup. Uh, what, gosh, it, I mean, anything yeah. that. And if provides. anything like piques your interest, give it a shot. See how you feel about it. And you know, at the end of it, even if maybe you don't, you're like, maybe this wasn't for me. You've still created something, which will give you a sense of worth because you've created something that somebody else hasn't created yet. Right. Even if it's the same as something else, it's not that thing. You've created something entirely new for the world. You know, and it kind of gives you a sense of. Of, of worth, you know? Yeah. And, and it's for Frankel's to Frankel's point by giving to the world that gives you meaning and purpose, like whether or not it's something amazing or it's spectacular or anything of that nature, you're still creating something and giving it to the world that we live in. And that provides meaning and purpose in your life. And he also talks about how uh, it's, it's tangible. And it's malleable so that that way you, you you can look at it and you can hold it in a light, but then you can also you know, manage it. You can manipulate it. You can make it a little bit. Uh, is that GLaDOS? Oh, yeah. I can't believe we're here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, we don't want. We probably don't. Beep, bop, boop, beep. Ugh. I don't know what's going on. You don't remember GLaDOS from the. Oh, we've already. I just don't know the, what's going on right now. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi, GLaDOS. You're so pretty. Wheatley. Wheatley. But yeah, so I mean, working on cars, I mean, the, 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 the amount of stuff that you can create in this world 
is just ridiculous. I mean, look at Etsy, man. Like, look at how much for real, right? Like, how That's much a website cr- for creating weird shit. Uh oh, oh, oh. I'm okay. I it sounds they can be quite enjoyable, right? You know, the, the rings, metalwork. I mean, they they do paintings, yeah, they, sculptures. Oh yeah, like there's. I, I I was recently seeing that there's like bugs. And stuff that like people put behind frames and then they sell them on Etsy. Like that, that's, <laughs> that's, like a, that's been a thing for a long time. Well, I understand that, but like it wasn't a thing through Etsy. But that's a hobby because people get to create yep. with bugs. Even though I hate spiders. Well, then you should kill them and put them behind glass. <laughs> so that, that way I can stare at them and be like, that's right. Who is the superior species now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll uh, show you. Don't test them, bro, because they'll come back in full force. Spiders? Yes. Oh. Like the the Australian like bird spider that that can go like three miles an hour and it's Ooh, the size of my three face. miles an hour. The size I of hate my spiders. Fa- oh, I'll I hate, say it right now. Yeah, we both hate. I got spiders. nothing to hide behind. All of this, I feel like, would be a lot more intense if I was actually having to do something. But like, my hands are in the air. Right hands now. free, just hands free, flying through the <laughs> just, portal, just waving with both hands. No one can see this because we don't have the webcam on. But you know, <laughs> I think too we should maybe talk about a moment, talk for a moment about. How creativity can impact you negatively, too. Okay. Hit because, me. so, I mean, you always hear about the troubled artist, right? Right. Because the thing is, if you're like creating something is difficult, it's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it and there would be no feeling of purpose behind it. Right. So, <clears throat> if you get, if you make your creativity your number one, if that's what you want to do, uh, say, whether it's being a musician, writing, painting, and you can't think of something to do within that, then all of a sudden your direction is lost, right. which can be a very depressing feeling. Oh. Not having depre- not having direction. So I think that's why you get a lot of those troubled artists because if you can't, like, it has to. I don't know. It's hard to say. No, it, it's you. You. I would one hundred percent agree with you because there's. Think of it like this: if you're a really good painter and you are constantly trying to create or constantly trying to paint, if you can't think of anything to paint, but you have the skills to be a really good painter, then, you know... Also, you're going to have pressure from society because if they like the last thing you did, now you have to try and top that. At the very least, make something as equally acceptable. Or Um, as awesome. And in which case, and honestly, that doesn't... It doesn't have to affect you, but because it does affect you, you know what I mean? Like if you just, just drop that and you just start creating, like we said, not everything has to be extraordinary. Right. But then once you make something extraordinary, all of a sudden you think everything has to be extraordinary. And that's when you're going to start running into problems with depression because you're like, I can't do it again. How am I ever going to continue doing this thing that I love if I can never do it? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And and that's where you start like reflecting. Right. You got to stop and be like. Okay. Go go get out of your head, you know. Go for go for a walk, do something, you know, reevaluate what specifically it is about that moment that's so frustrating and so difficult to create something mm-hmm. and then reflect on that and kind of utilize that as motivation, you know, because I'm I'm not creating what I want because of X, Y, and Z. So what can I do to change X, Y, and Z? Right? Or just yeah. start just like force yourself to create something that is not that and maybe halfway through it, you'll have an idea. Right. Like if I just start writing randomly, if I just start just uh, stream of conscious writing, like all that is going to be a bunch of shit. <laughs> I can write a bunch of shit for like 10 pages. But the thing is, maybe once a page, an idea will just pop up organically. Uh, you know, like same thing, I guess, if you take a paintbrush, just start mixing up paint, just start making strokes on a canvas. And all of a sudden, maybe some, maybe a part of that canvas is going to start appearing to be something. You know what I mean? The point is, don't don't just stop when you have that writer's block or you have that creative block. Don't stop. Just don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep doing it. Just make some shit. Right. Some bullshit. <laughs> I'm serious, <laughs> Even man. Even if it is like no writer. Well, I shouldn't say no, no, no writer, no painter, no musician, no one like that. Just picked up and whatever it is their hobby is that they were creating and was amazing at it you know like there are savants yes we know (laughs) about mozart five people in the world you know like we know about those people but you know look at how many people post stuff of like oh well this was me practicing to uh essentially paint six seven years ago and now this is what i'm painting you know there's there's a much more 
I don't know how to explain it. It's just a... It's a process. Yeah, exactly. You can't expect it to just be. Because if it was just be, you would have been doing it since you were like five. Right. And maybe you were. And even then, you, you can get burned out. You can start finding or wanting direction in other places. I think the point of this is, though, just create something. If you're feeling stuck in life, however it may be, and, oh, man, how about this? How about you are a creator, say your job is writing, mm-hmm. and you're stuck, you don't know what to do? Create something else. Right. You know? Right. right. Like, walk pick away up, from up, that uh, project. Yeah. Learn maybe learn an instrument. Instrument maybe <laughs> pick up a pencil, and start trying to draw something. It doesn't have to be good. You don't even have to show it to anybody. But the fact is, you're going to be taking your mind off of what you're trying to do and using it in a, in a constructive way. Continuing to use it in a constructive way. Right. Dang man, you're turning all cyclops on that. Oh yeah. Uh, get it. Alrighty. I think I think that's a good place to end for right now. Yeah. All right. All right. Like and comment if you enjoy what we're doing. Oh, I need the. Damn it. Like and comment if you enjoy what we're doing. (laughs) Do the same thing if you don't enjoy what we're doing because we care about what you all think. Yes, we do. And continue to comment if you want to hear us talk about anything in particular or if you want to see us play any particular video game. Come back for more questions. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's so jarring. Oh, look, you were stuck in between two portals. (laughs)